Seth's going to wrap up today with a, a talk on Bro Bro's Development Outlook. So thank you, Seth Hall. So um, it's funny because uh, a while ago, Robin and I were, were standing around talking to someone. And this, was, this was a couple years ago. Um, and the person said, Bro's really great. Keep in mind, this is a couple years ago. Bro's really great. Do you see making a career out of this? <laughs> there wasn't really an answer. We just kind of laughed because the, the one thing that we keep discovering is every time you get to the top of a mountain with Bro, there's <laughs> a lot more mountains beyond it. And um, e even if Bro is doing things that really no other system is doing, we keep finding more areas that can make your life better. And, and your life better could be uh, easier to accomplish something you didn't think you could accomplish, like analyzing 10 gigs of, of traffic. Not a 10 gig interface, but 10 gigs of traffic, or, or 20, or 30, or 50. But actually looking at all that traffic and trying to make sense of it. And then uh, later on, even taking Matthias's project that he was showing, and, and so this is actually lots of ideas from lots of people. Most of the ideas don't actually come from me. Actually, very few of them do. <laughs> but um, it's, it's this general approach of you get a lot of smart people together, and you actually get them talking. And you get them very interested in you. We're not interested in really doing things for the sake of doing them. It's, it's, the whole interest is in, at least for me, and I know it's slightly different for people that, that do actual research. I, I'm probably the worst researcher ever. I, my name has gotten on several, but I, I've not done anything for them. I don't deserve to be on half those papers. Um, but but it's, it's actually interesting when you really focus on the users and say, we want to make users into magicians in their organizations. And we want to make them able to suddenly, you know, tomorrow install something and actually accomplish 10 times more than they were able to before. And, and beyond that, even think about their problems and their, their domain their, that they're working on in a different way. And I think that we've started to achieve that with Bro and, and things in the Bro universe. But I, there's a long way to go still. Um, so some of the work that uh, Robin has been working on for a while, because Hilti and Binpack++ aren't enough for him. Um, he, he recently, in the last uh, couple of years, added dynamic plugins to Bro. They were merged in really soon after the 2.3 uh, the, the release happened. We want a long time to kind of play with these things, because we don't know what this means. It's very similar to like Apache dynamic plugins. Like you have a shared object, so you add, uh, uh, what, are, what are any Apache modules? But you can think of like it's adding you know, extra functionality without having to rebuild Apache. So this is adding extra C++ level functionality without having to rebuild Bro. Um, so there are some things that are actually changing in, in Bro, and, and they're changed in master right now to some degree uh, because that code was merged in so that we can get a long time to play with it because the, the scariest thing is coming out with a release that, that is, is troublesome, very troublesome. We're all, you're always going to have little trouble. Um, so some of the things like uh, protocol and file analyzers, they're broken out into plugins. Some of them are, are static plugins. They're, they're organized slightly differently internally, but they get built into Bro, but you have the ability also to do dynamic plugins. So you could write an analyzer, and this is pre binpack plus plus, which turns analyzers into scripts. So this is saying there is a file analyzer or a protocol analyzer that I wrote in binpack, or please don't do this, but wrote in hand, wrote by hand. Um, I, I wrote this, and now I put it on GitHub, and someone installed it. They didn't rebuild Bro; they just installed this uh, this analyzer. It could also be um, writers and uh, input sources and log writers. So say, um, what's an example? Uh, someone, something someone mentioned to me yesterday, I think, a Kafka writer out of Bro. Say that you want Bro to write Kafka logs and 
we have not provided that functionality. Well, you sit down and you write the code that does that, and then you tell people, go to GitHub and install this thing, and people install it, and suddenly they have Kafka writers. Or, or, or whatever other output, or, or input. You know, say you want to read from some other mechanism or something, you could actually do that too. There's also packet sources. So right now, our, our primary packet source where we acquire packets from is uh, libpcap. It doesn't have to be that way. Those were abstracted in the, in, they were abstracted in 2.3, that's right. It, oh, okay, well, they're, they're abstracted, they're going to be abstracted in 2.4, and they're written as plugins. So for instance, may, we may ship like a, um, a netmap plugin but you, uh, using the, the native NetMap API, but there could also be a PF ring plugin that uses the native PF ring API. So it, it, there's not a, a lot of benefit there, but you know, it is, it's opening the door to, to do that. You can also do things like um, uh, do, do BIFs as plugins. So if anyone's familiar with what a BIF is, it, it's a function that you can call in a bro script that is essentially implemented in C++. So, it, you know, on one hand, it's a little scary to do that stuff because if you have a bug in that and someone installs that, that BIF, you could lead to them getting compromised, which is not a fun position to be in, being the one at fault for getting someone compromised because of a bug. So the dynamic plugins are, it, it's, a, it's a pretty big deal. Um, it's, it's very likely, actually, that we'll be building something akin to a, Ruby gems or pip or whatever whatever pip is built on because there's another Python package manager, but um, all of these kind of package management systems that will be coming to bro and the dynamic plugin stuff will probably be part of that. So you can imagine installing bro and then maybe we build it through bro control and I'm, I have no idea how this will get built ultimately, but imagine going into bro control and saying package install. Kafka writer, and it goes, <laughs> compiles it, and suddenly you have a Kafka writer, you're done. That sounds kind of nice from a deployment perspective to be able to do that where you don't have to go to GitHub, you don't have to clone the repository, you don't have to do all of this stuff, you just install it. It should also give us a good opportunity actually for providing people mechanisms to be able to put testing infrastructures into these plugins. So say there is a, um, uh, say there's an analyzer and it out by default outputs some log and you really, as they work on the analyzer and as you upgrade Bro, you want to make sure that that thing continues to work. So we would be, they would be able to have a testing infrastructure and then it, it could even, it, they'd be able, to, be able to have a testing infrastructure that could ensure that it continues working the same. And you can imagine even going further, well you want to know that, so you've downloaded all these different modules, right, and you put it into your, uh, your production deployment of Bro. Well you actually, there, there's a possibility that some of those could conflict with each other. They're doing things that, caught, that sort of steps on the toe of another module or something. But if you have all of this test infrastructure and you say, this collection of, of um, modules and plugins, um, this is my production thing. You could actually say test with all of this together and actually sort of run all of it and do all the tests for all of those different plugins to make sure that if they step on each other's toes, hopefully it breaks the test so you actually find out, oh, well, there's something conflicting with this one. So moving on from dynamic plugins. Um, there is a project going on right now that is heavily reworking bro control. So Bro Control was originally written in 2007, 2006, something like that, when the, there was a cluster paper. Almost every, so many things in Bro have papers written about them. Um, so there was a paper on sort of this model of horizontally scaling traffic monitoring by having lots, by distributing the traffic and having lots of processes monitor it and, and physical hosts monitor it. Um, so Robin started writing this tool called Cluster. And it was very specific towards this notion of, well, if we're gonna be running a lot of bro processes, we should probably help users instrument and orchestrate all of that complexity to wire them all together because they're not independent. They're all talking to each other and there, there's a lot of you know, communication that needs to happen and they need configured in very specific ways. So he wrote this thing called Cluster and it was really built around this notion of 
just helping users get this set up. And then I started running it in production at the Ohio State University, and um, I told him six months later, and he wasn't, <laughs> it, he worried about it a little bit because this was not a production tool, and I told him I'd been running it in production for six months. Um, so the problems, though, that that, that that brings up is that Bro Control is what came from Cluster. It was, it was a rename. It was the Cluster shell suddenly became Bro Control. Um, it inherited a lot of old assumptions, and it inherited... Um, It inherited its domain, which was to specifically help someone set up a cluster, not for this larger task of how do I run Bro. I mean, I, I think that's probably right. So it, it was a little too narrowly focused because it was it had a task to accomplish, and there was the top of that mountain hadn't been reached yet to see the next mountain that was this is a good thing generally for lots of different tasks. So lots of work has gone into it, and like Daniel Thayer's, you know, fixed bugs in it, and um, uh, lots of people have added various features, and there was a lot of work that got put into it before the 2.0 release to separate Bro scripts out of it and put them into Bro. Um, but now uh, Justin Azoff is actually leading a project to turn this into Bro Control D. What is Bro Control D? You might ask. Um, it's this, uh, we believe what it's going to end up being. There's still some very, very low level work that uh, Justin and Daniel are working on right now. But we believe what this is going to end up being is a persistent process. So there will be no more bro control cron, I believe. And yell at me if I misspeak anywhere. Um, we believe that this is going to end up with a persistent process that sits there connect it out to all of your infrastructure. If you have 10 boxes, it'll stay connected to them all the time. And um, so there's no more bro control cron. You just have to make sure that, that bro control D is continuing to run. It stays connected out to all of them, and it's just checking to make sure things are running OK and um, doing housekeeping or whatever. But it will expose a REST API. So if you want to restart your cluster, maybe you'll run a tool called bro control. Maybe when you run that tool, it'll look exactly the same as what you have today. But internally, it'll be implemented totally different, where it's actually only hitting Bro Control D's REST API, getting results back, showing you the results. From your, from your perspective, nothing changed. Um, except for you don't have to do Bro Control Cron, and you have this process you have to keep up all the time. Um, the other thing this enables is, is if it is a REST API, you can write a web interface on top of it. So suddenly, you can have Bro Control D that is actually a web interface. And I, I, I'm not sure if I'm ambivalent to that or if I like the idea. I don't know. But I like the idea of it being possible to do that. So you can actually have it do one of the various JSON data returning things. And, and you could actually like, you know, make a real web interface for this thing that directly communicates on the back end with Bro Control D. Um, I, I hope over time, this is not part of the initial stuff, but I hope over time there's a lot of functionality that will be added. My, my goal eventually is I want to see sites that have, let's say, 500 physical hosts that are distributed across the world. So enormous, enormous monitoring infrastructure. What I would like to see is them running Bro Control D from one location so that they don't actually run a cluster here and a cluster here and a cluster here and a cluster here. They run bro control D from one location, and they actually put a log, like, so, and maybe they don't want to centralize logs, because that's actually a lot of complexity to saying, we're going to bring all the logs back. So maybe what they want to do is eventually run VAST distributed out to all these places, which bro control D, hopefully, would be able to instrument a little bit, maybe. Maybe they would also, um, maybe they just want to keep text logs. So they would run log nodes all over the place. So the logs come towards the center until they hit a log node, and then they stay there. So if you do want to centralize them all, just remove all your log process nodes, and then restart, and suddenly you have logs coming into the center. So I, I think this is actually achievable. I, I don't think that there's really any limitations to doing this. There are a lot of technical issues to work through to get there, but I, I don't think this is unreasonable. But it, it, that won't be the first rewrite. I, I think that the bro control rewrite will probably hit in 2.4. Or uh, I rewrites the wrong word, rework. So there's another project that uh, Matthias. So moving on. So we've covered 
dynamic plugins. We covered bro control D, the bro control to bro control D rework. Um, there's another one because there's been a big recognition for a long time that uh, the communication code in Bro, which was, I think, written in about 2002, 2001, 2002, something around there. All right, so two, let's, 2003. Bro has essentially been a, a, for lack of a better phrase, a distributed event queue since, since 2003. No one knew that. <laughs> I still don't think people accept that. Um, so it's been a distributed event queue. The problem is that it was, it was done for a paper, right? Okay, so the code, again, another one that was done for a paper. It was done for a paper. It was written well. Um, the, but under high load, we've had some cases that we can't reproduce. So we've tried to reproduce this one bug that has sort of vexed bro for a long time. And we have not been able to reproduce it except for in production under heavy load. Um, maybe you guys have seen it. It's, uh, you'll get a crash, and it'll say something about poll 115. H who's seen that error? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, there's a very specific reason that is 115 that we don't need to go into, but there's also a problem. I mean, ignoring the bug, right? So this, that's a definite bug. So there's also a problem conceptually with the way things are organized right now. You have Broccoli, which is a C implementation of the Bro protocol. Then you have Bro, which internally has the internal implementation of the Bro protocol. That sucks. They, they're not the same implementation. They are not feature compatible. They, Broccoli does not support everything you can say over the Bro protocol. So we talked about it for a really long time. and. Um, John Suick is now working on a thing called Broker. Broker is using libcaf that Matthias talked about. It is the C++ actor framework. And it is um, a rewrite as a library of the domain of, let's see. It's a, it's a, it's a, geez, I don't even know the right way to describe it. It's, it's basically suited to bro. So you have suitable data types. You have suitable um, event model, and it gives you the ability to transport events and other necessary uh, messages that we need to send between bro processes. But the best part is because it's a library, the eventually, and I don't know how this will actually proceed, but eventually what will happen is the code in bro that does the communication code will be ripped out, and bro will just use broker. But you could write a C program, or C++, or people could write um, Ruby bindings, and also use Broker and talk to Bro processes, or talk to eventually probably talk to Vast through through the, this native communication mechanism. There's another feature that we kind of layered on top because it's been a big problem for a long time. Um, there's pro it's quite likely that in the end there will be a distributed key value store included as part of Broker. So. There had been an evaluation for quite a while where we looked at, um, and when I say we, I don't mean me, I mean other people. <laughs> so I'm very clear on that. I, I'm not qualified to, to, to do the evaluation completely. But um, there was evaluation done of NanoMessage and ZeroMQ because those are very popular. There, lots of people use them for communication. For several reasons, which you will have to ask someone else, I can talk about a little bit of them, but they didn't quite fit. They didn't quite work right for us. So we've turned to libcppa to, to manage the, uh, the actual uh, transport. Is that correct? CAF. Oh, that's I, Sorry, libcppa is the, wrong, is the old name. They, they renamed it recently, and I, my brain hasn't been reworked yet. Um, so anyway, libcaf. Um, so the idea, though, is that in Bro, there will be APIs for you to persistently store data distributed. So you could have 10 workers and say, put this in the key value store, and the key value store is shared across all of your workers. Get this from the key value store. I don't think we're totally, totally sure what the API is going to look like yet, but there will be a couple variants on the API. Um, but it's going to solve a lot of problems that, that currently you encounter when you're writing a bro script and you're like, I don't know how to work around this problem. Once there's a key value store available, it's really going to change things a lot for, for a number of problems. 
So we've got dynamic plugins, bro control D, broker. Another kind of small one is uh, small but important. We've been looking into the uh, SUSE build system. Um, if this investigation, are you doing the investigation into that? Okay. Well, if, if this query works out well, we may actually start distributing supported, well, supported uh, packages for a lot more operating systems than we are right now. Uh, so we could actually, like right now, I know a number of people, and on the mailing list, people have probably seen this, where they will install a bro package, and they'll be like, it didn't work on something because it was an RPM, but how many distributions use RPM, or how many distributions use DEBs, or, um, or th things like that. But the SUSE build system actually, SUSE, the, or Novell, or wait, which way did that buyout go? No, okay, then someone bought Novell. What, someone runs this. <laughs> the, the software that does it is also available, but uh, they operate an infrastructure where they actually do everything for you, and you can just submit stuff to be built, and then they build it. Um, so anyway, if this works out, it may be eventually that you'll just be able to go pick the bro package for your um, distribution and install it, and hopefully it works. Um, so there's, there's a, a, we have an intern this summer. Awesome, are you in here? He's probably working on this tool I'm about to talk about in the lobby. Um, so there, there's a thing that we've been talking about for, for quite a while called, it, I don't like the name still, we've been calling it the Packet Acquisition and Control Framework. It's basically this idea that we fully recognize that having the ability to control traffic flow is very fascinating. And, and I don't mean, when I say control traffic flow, I'm not talking about putting an ACL in, necessarily. I'm not talking about putting in a firewall rule to block traffic, necessarily. I'm talking about all of them and, and actually some more. Um, it, it could be this notion that, uh, like someone I think talked about with uh, shunting traffic, where maybe bro said, uh, Justin, Justin, talking with the Arista. Uh, maybe you just don't want to see it. Like it's fine that the traffic goes across the network. You're just saying, I don't want to see it because I, I just can't. It's too much or something, like a, a four gig flow. You probably don't want to look at that. Um, so it kind of, what we're trying to do is sort of build this model that encompasses all of that. And part of that is the recognition that ideally you're going to be doing this um, shunting or traffic blocking as far away from your monitoring host as possible. You're going to be doing null routes, you're going to be doing ACLs, you're going to be doing... Um, um, firewall rules, something like that. But if that doesn't work, then there's several layers of fallback because the, what you want to do is keep the packets away from your CPU. You, well, you may want to, there's the two cases, keep them from going across the network or keep them as far away from your CPU as you can. And that could be maybe they hit the PCI bus, but they don't hit bro, like, like they, there's something in the middle. And that was where we started to think a lot. and and figure out ways to approach this. And I worked on Robin for six months telling him, we should use Click, we should use Click, we should use Click. So, Click sorry, Click Software Router for anyone that's played with it. For anyone that hasn't, don't worry about it, it doesn't matter. Um, so I kept working and saying we should do this because what we need is a packet layer in Bro that is flexible and can do packet handling and send stuff all over. And I got a lot of, no, that's not a good idea, I don't think we should do it. No, I think that's wrong, I shouldn't say that. It was a lot of I'm not sure. And one day we were doing a call and I said, I think I'm not, I don't like the idea anymore of using Click. And he told me, actually I was just, I just got, became convinced that we should. So then we talked to the guy that wrote Click and we discussed all of the stuff with him and over time I think we kind of realized that it would be actually very hard, it, it wouldn't be a good deployment and there'd be some technical issues if we had gone that route. But now our intern in the summer, uh, um, he has built a tool that is basically informed by click and very, very flexible in the sense that you can read an interface, send it to a duplicate. This is configuration. This is not like, like, this is just how you configure the tool. You could read traffic from an interface, send it to a duplicator element, 
duplicate it out to two different things and then have and maybe attach load balancer elements to both of those and then say load balance out to 10 bro processes and also load balance out to three snort processes. And, and this is, there's a huge range of things that you could do with this. So the 10 bro processes, what they end up sniffing, the user interface is actually provided by NetMap. So we had talked to the guys that wrote NetMap and they added some features for us and it, it sits on top of some other features they had already implemented. You may end up sniffing an interface that is basically, I'll, I'll gloss over the technical part, but it could be a, an interface. So you run bro-i, bro-1, bro-2, bro-3. So it's very clear as to what's happening. You're saying, I have a virtual interface named essentially bro-1, bro-2, bro-3, bro-4, bro-5. And then you have snort-1, snort-2, snort-3. Maybe you have another one that, that the packets are all being copied to also that, um, that uh, you just use on demand for like TCP dumps. You can run TCP dump dash I, TCP dump one. And that gives you all the traffic, just in case you're curious. And I probably shouldn't go into any more on that, but that discussion can go on for a surprisingly long time, as I discovered this morning. Um, there, there's, it's, it's, there's a lot of stuff you should be able to uh, construct with it. Um, so let's see, we got Dynamic plugins, bro control D broker. I'll skip over vast and bintec plus plus. Those have been talked about already. Um, SUSE build system. Uh, so I get two minutes left. There's there's kind of one more thing I wanted to to add in at the very end. Um, Broala has had some analyzers internally that we've been working on, and um, we have actually open sourced them already. No one knew because they were just like one commit into the bro repository. But uh, the Bro repository actually has analyzers now for um, MySQL, which is neat. You can see queries that are happening over the MySQL protocol. Um, there's another one for Kerberos, so you can actually see like Kerberos authentication. So if you're monitoring at your border and people are using Xboxes, you can actually see them logging into Xbox, or what's it called, Xbox Live or something. You can actually see them logging in. Vlad has discovered that you can actually see the video game they're playing in some cases. <laughs> <laughs> Which is interesting. I, I don't know what you would do with it, but frequently that's how stuff starts in Bro. You say, I don't know what you would do with it, but what the hell, we collected it anyway. The other one that I think a lot of people are mostly, mostly interested in, though, is this protocol called um, Server Message Blocks or Common Internet File System. Um, it has a lot of functionality in it. I, I don't think it's possible to make a complete SMB analyzer. The, the protocol is so huge that it would be nearly impossible to say this is complete. But for some form of, for some variant of complete, it is, and, and it works. And um, it's gonna be really fascinating to see what people do with it. It gives you a lot of visibility into what's happening on your network traffic, or sorry, on your file servers. So this is something you can start putting sniffing points in place in front of data centers, because you have clients that are talking into these data centers. And there are a lot of files being transferred, it turns out. Um, there are, uh, and, and as you would expect, the files are actually fed back into the file analysis framework, so you can do things with them, because why not? Um, there, there's also things like, say someone opens a share, and I believe this is the actual sort of user experience. Say someone opens a share on the network, and it loads a directory of files. Wouldn't it be interesting if you had Mac times back in time for the files on that file share? Because the logs right now, by default, do that. And they give you that. So if you have an incident and it involves some particular file on your network, uh, some, on some file server, and you have logs going back six months, you'll actually see uh, what, are, what are all the Mac times? Um, modified, access, uh, created, and the changed one that makes no sense to me still. Um, so anyway, those four times, they all show up in the log. And you have the ability then to actually search back in time through your logs and say, that file at that time, at that day, had this timestamp on it. Maybe the disk was shredded and you don't even have it anymore. You have forensic data off the disk in your bro logs, which is really weird. And, and the first time I saw it, it was very confusing because I was like, wait a minute, this is sort of changing things a little bit because suddenly I have forensic, I have host forensic data that I don't even have on the host. <laughs> 
I don't have that data anywhere, but suddenly I do. And uh, having Mac times back in time, at points in time, it, it, it's fascinating. But anyway, these will likely be cleaned up and put into the next release. Oh, and there's actually one other thing. Um, there is an NTLM analyzer, so you actually get authentication data over SMB. Um, and that may be applied in other places. I don't know. You'll have to talk to Vlad about that to, to see if he's going to extend that to being used at the place. Sorry, Vlad. Someone's going to bug you about that. Um, so anyway, I, I think that kind of wraps up. There are a million other projects, but they're a little too ephemeral still and probably not worth talking about quite yet. <laughs> so anyway, that's it. I think that wraps up today. Thanks. Thanks.